In this tutorial, we're going to learn about an app called GarageBand that we can use to create some audio projects in the classroom. And it could be teacher-centered projects, it could be student-centered projects. There's lots of possibilities for how to use GarageBand. So I'm going to tap on GarageBand. You can see it's there in the upper right corner next to iMovie. And I can just tap that to open it up. Now while that's loading, I just want to make a comment about this. GarageBand used to be a paid app. But if you have an iPad that was activated or purchased on September 1st, 2013, or more recently than that, and it can be updated to iOS 8, then you should be able to get GarageBand for free. In fact, it may already be installed on your iPad. If it's not, you can go to the App Store, do a search for GarageBand, and you should be able to install it for free. Now, if you have an older iPad and it's not capable of updating to iOS 8, or it was you know purchased so long ago that it just it can't get the latest version of GarageBand, then you probably either won't be able to get GarageBand on your device at all, or you'll have to pay. So that may be good news for some people, bad news for others, but GarageBand is now considered to be a free app with newer devices. So what is GarageBand for? Basically, GarageBand is for composing music, and a lot of people, a lot of bands that have CDs out, that uh, you know, have MP3s that you can purchase in the iTunes Store and other places, a lot of them use GarageBand as their method of composing their music. Whether they use GarageBand on a computer or a laptop, or whether they use it on an iPad, a lot of those bands and musicians are using it. But you know, what if I teach math or science? Do I have any reason to use GarageBand? I may or may not be composing music with my students. And uh, so is it really useful? Well, yes, it is. Because in addition to composing music, you can use GarageBand to do any number of other kinds of audio projects. I'm gonna tap on the plus sign in the upper left corner to show you how to get started. And when you tap on that button, you'll see that it gives you some instruments and a microphone, an audio recorder, that you can use to compose your song or other audio project. You can see that there's a smart keyboard, there's a smart guitar, there's some drums, guitar amp, and then audio recorder. And this is the one that I'm going to focus on most in this presentation. We also have a sampler and smart drums and some other things, smart strings. So I hope that you'll check these out. There's some exciting things that you can do with this app, especially if you are a musician. But I am not a musician. I can still use this app in lots of ways. And let's focus on creating something like a podcast or an audio program for your students to listen to, or maybe it's your students creating a book report this way, or you know, practicing their French or their Spanish this way, or describing the steps for reducing a fraction. There's all sorts of great audio type projects that you can do with GarageBand on the iPad. So to get started using that audio recorder, all you need to do is bring it to the forefront so that you can see it front and center, and then you're going to want to choose either voice or one of the other options across the bottom. So you can see it says voice, it says instrument, and more sounds. If you tap on more sounds, it brings up lots of different options. Okay, and you can browse through those and see what's available. We're going to take a little bit of a look at that a little bit later. If you tap on instrument, it takes you in with an instrument, but most often what you're going to do is select either the audio recorder or the instrument you want to use from this menu here, and then you'll just tap, in this case, voice. In the case of some of these others, you would tap either smart drums or acoustic drums or whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and tap on voice. So I tap the voice button and it loads up this interface here. Now this is the brand new 2017 interface for GarageBand on the iPad. And you can see there's a bunch of different controls and buttons and knobs and things like that, which is great if you know how to use them. And uh, you know, even if you don't, it's kind of fun to play with them and see how it affects your project. So I'm glad that they're there, even though I don't 
totally understand what they all do. But really, the first thing you need to be aware of is up here in the upper right corner. It looks very insignificant, not that important at all, but here in the upper right corner is a plus sign that's pretty important. Now remember, this is gonna be an audio project that I'm creating, maybe a podcast for a Spanish class, for example. And if you'll tap that button there in the upper right, you'll see that by default, your GarageBand song or audio recording is set to be only eight bars long. So with a podcast, that's a problem, right? I don't know how long my podcast is really gonna be. So I'm gonna tap where it says section A, eight bars. I'll just tap right there on eight bars and I'll change it to automatic. If I wanted to, I could manually say, okay, I want it to be 10 bars or whatever, but it's easier just to go to automatic, tap that button, and now it's just gonna automatically extend to the length that I want the podcast to be. So that's important to know. I'm gonna tap now on the center of the screen to get back. Next up, I want you to focus here on this symbol. This is the input settings button. If you tap on that, it pops open and it gives you some options that are fairly important. So what's the input level? Is it gonna record my voice at a high enough level? Well, if I wanna make sure it's very high, I just tap on that knob and drag it to the far right. It's gonna record at a high level. If you want it to be lower, you can move it to the left. Now you'll notice that as I'm doing that, this in knob is also changing, it's moving down. So it corresponds to that, okay? There's also an out button here at the right, and uh, so that would increase or decrease the final product audio. At least that's my understanding. But going back to the input settings, by tapping that button there, you'll see that it also has options to turn on a monitor so that you can hear sound from the input as you play and record. And then also noise gate, and I really don't know what this is, but it says drag the slider to set the level for reducing input noise. So that should clean out uh, some unwanted noise, I guess. So I'm gonna tap away from that pop-up and it hides. Okay, another little tool that you should be aware of is here at the top, we have a button for what is called a metronome. Now, I'm sure many of you know what a metronome is, but basically, if you turn that on, you're gonna get little knocking sounds, little tapping sounds that, that will play as you are recording and it just kind of helps you keep time and things like that. If it's bothering you, just tap on that symbol and you can turn it off, okay? So those are just a few little things that are easy to miss, but they can be important. We're gonna take a look at some of these other tools across the top a little bit later and also a little bit down here. Before we go too much further though, I do wanna mention these settings here in the upper right. If you tap on the settings button, you can do some things like change the tempo, the time signature, key signature, all of these things that I kind of understand, but if you're a musician, you understand these things a lot better than me, And uh, but you just need to know where to go to get them, and you can change the key and so forth. So that's important to know. All right, I think I'm ready to record my podcast, which is gonna be a lesson in Spanish. Now, if I'd like, I can play around with some of these settings down here before I record. I could change the tone, of my voice, of the recording. I could change the pitch control, the compressor, vocal hall, and drive. And as I've said, I am not a musician, so I don't really get all those things, but I'm glad that I have those options in case I ever learn what they really are. So now I'm ready to record. And to do that, I'm just gonna go up here to the top center and I'll tap on this record button. Now before I record, it's important for me to take note of where the microphone is on my iPad. If you don't have a real sense of where that microphone is, you need to find it. It's a little hole, almost a little dot, and if you cover that up with your hand, it's gonna cause all sorts of wrestling sounds and problems for you. And if you don't have the microphone close to your mouth, you're really not gonna be able to hear very well in the final product. One other tip, if you're gonna be doing this a lot, you might wanna invest in an external microphone that you can plug in to the iPad and it'll give you a little bit better audio. Now, before I do the recording, I need to make sure I turn up this in volume a little bit higher so that it'll actually be able to hear me. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and tap the record button and get started. And it's gonna give me a countdown. Hola estudiantes, in this lesson we're going to learn how to conjugate AR verbs in the present tense in Spanish. Isn't that awesome? Let's get started. Okay, and then I'm just going to tap stop. And then I'm done with recording that track. But where did it go? I don't see it anywhere. Where is it? 
Well, here it is. It's here in this little button here that looks like a wall almost, a brick wall. It actually represents layers. So if I tap on that layers button, it shows me the audio clip that I've just recorded. There's the lead vocal. Now at this point, I should be able to tap on the vocal and notice when I do that, it gives me these handles on the sides and now I can tap and hold and I should be able to move that to the right or left. Notice that this is kind of a timeline of seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, and so forth. So I can move that back and forth if I need to. All right, now my recording of course is perfect, doesn't need to be changed at all, but if yours needs to, or if your students' recordings need to be edited maybe, and parts taken out, what you can do is use this little playhead that you can see here. I'm just dragging that left and right with my finger, okay? And just put it where you would like to do some editing, and then just tap twice on the audio clip, in this case, the lead vocals. So I'm gonna tap twice, it gives me this menu across the top of the screen and there's a button there that says split. So I can just tap split and at that point the playhead turns into a pair of scissors. And you would think that at this point it would just automatically cut right there, but it doesn't. Instead, you have to put your finger on the pair of scissors and then drag it down and then let go. And that will cut right at that point and it's kind of fun to do that, honestly, so it's kind of nice. Let's say I want to cut out this portion here. I can just put the playhead where I want it to be, and in this case, it's not really a playhead, it's a pair of scissors, and then I just drag down, and I just cut that as well. Now I can tap and hold and drag the part that I want to delete, put it somewhere else. Maybe I don't want to delete it, maybe I just want to reorder it, so I could do that. Or I could tap twice on that clip and say delete. So that's how you can fix errors, mistakes, maybe ums and uhs and things like that in your recordings. And of course now I can tap on that second part of my recording and drag it to where I want it to be. Now if this were really a podcast that I wanted to publish and use, I might want to have a little bit of intro music and maybe outro music. So notice what I've done, I've just tapped and held and dragged those clips further down the timeline so that there's room for an intro. So now there's space for about a second and three-fourths for an intro. Okay, now I am not a musician, so I'm not prepared to play a guitar or anything like that, or a piano, to create an intro. Fortunately, GarageBand takes care of that for me, or it can. Here in the upper right corner, you'll see something that looks like a roller coaster or a loop of some kind. If you tap on that, it gives you loops and you can select one of these, okay? I'm gonna go with something like Ambition Sizzle Synth, okay? I'm a child of the 80s, basically. Love 80s music, and the synthesizer has got to be the greatest instrument ever created, ever played. So I'm gonna go with Ambition Sizzle Synth, and uh, I'll just assume that that's awesome. I'm sure it is. So at this point, notice that it's playing, and I can hear a preview of what that's gonna sound like. You probably can't hear that, but I can and it sounds fantastic. So now I'm just gonna tap and hold on the name of it and drag it onto the screen, and notice what it did. It added an instrument right there, a virtual instrument, the Ambition Sizzle Synth. Now because this is a loop, notice what it looks like. It starts here at the beginning, and then it plays itself out, and then at this point it loops back to the beginning. Okay, that's why they call it a loop. So because it is a loop, I can just tap on that right edge and I can drag it to the right as far as I want to go with it because it'll just keep looping. So it's great for intros or outros, for podcasts, or even for songs. So that's about where I want it to be. If I needed to, I could cut it and uh, you know trim it down, uh, but I'll stick with that. Now, just the same way, I could add another loop for the end of my podcast, or I could even just double tap on this loop copy it, and then move the playhead, and then double tap and paste. So now I've got that same loop, and it's serving this time as an outro, and I can put it where I want it to be. All right, now like I've admitted several times, I'm not a musician myself, but some of you may be. And if you would like to have a little bit more control over the music that's in your song or your podcast, what you can do is just go down here to the lower left corner, and you can add another track. Okay, but this time, 
instead of using the audio recorder, I could use this drum set, okay? And notice that I can choose to have it be smart drums or acoustic drums or electric drums. And there's also other options. I could use a keyboard, a smart piano keyboard, an alchemy synth keyboard. There's just lots of different options here for different instruments that I could add. So I'm going to stick with the keyboard, and this is the smart piano. And what you can do is you can tap on these notes to play different notes. And I know you probably can't hear that, but uh, it's playing notes. You can also tap here where it says off, and there's a little dot. You can tap and change it. And this is the autoplay dial. And right now it's off, but if I tap on that dot, I can change it to one, two, or three, or four. And what this does is it allows me to kind of automatically create some music. So I can just tap different notes here, even two at a time if I want to, and it adjusts the music that is playing, okay? And I could record that, so I can record and tap, and it's basically producing a song for me. I don't have to really understand music to create something that sounds pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna tap stop, and it's gonna add that track to my track list. Okay, so by tapping on the button that was here, you can see that there's my grand piano track. And I didn't have to choose grand piano. I could have chosen a different kind of piano. Let me show you how to do that. When you go in to smart piano, for example, you can tap where it says grand piano, and then you can choose specifically what kind of piano. So electric piano, that would have been much better, I think. Okay, so there's the autoplay. You can change the tremolo and the chorus and then start tapping away to create your music. So there's just so many options and it really does adjust to your music talent and your knowledge of music. So for example, I could even customize this more. If I tap on grand piano, double tap on it, I can go to edit and look what it does. It breaks down that song into its notes and um, you can go in and you can edit it at a very fine level. Okay, I can tap on a note and change it. So you can really make some fine-tuned adjustments to your songs or to your podcasts. When you're done, you can just tap done and it takes you back to the track view. All right, now there's so much more that we could look at. For example, up here in the upper left, let's quickly look through some of these buttons in the upper left. The first one just takes you back to the screen where you can pick another track or another type of track to add. Uh, this one is that important button that keeps taking us back and forth to the track list. Next to that, you have some levels adjustments. You can change the output, you can change the compressor level, the echo level. So there's some effects there that are kind of cool and nice. Next to that are some effects. You can do some visual equalizer effects and some others. And to be honest, I haven't played with these a whole lot. If you notice at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to move this to the side so you can see it a little bit better. But at the bottom of the screen, there's some uh, effects tools that you can tap while recording. And, you know, there's some DJ effects that you can use and things like that. So that's kind of fun. Check those out and experiment with them if you're interested. Now I'm going to tap the plus sign again because if you go back to the audio recorder, there is another option that we have. When you tap on the voice button, it takes you here. And the last time I showed you this, after looking at some of the settings, we just jumped in to recording using this record button. But notice that that's in studio mode. There's also a fun mode. If you tap on fun, it takes you to a screen like this and you tap OK and it gives you a bunch of different voices and kind of fun effects that you can use. So you can record like a monster voice, a robot voice, a chipmunk voice, alien, telephone. So this is really kind of a fun way to use GarageBand, especially for younger children and students. So now that I've set that, I can tap record up at the top and it gives me the countdown. I can record my voice. Hola, como estas? Tap stop and it's gonna add that track. If I tap here, you can see it in the track list, and there it is. So it's a monster uh, sounding recording for the vocal. So all of those things are kind of fun and worth experimenting with and learning how to use. Now when you're done composing your masterpiece, whether it be a podcast or a song or whatever, at that point, what do you do with it? It's just a, a song, you can tap this back button here, just to the right of the undo button. You can tap that back button 
and you can tap play and listen to your creation. All right. Sounds great to me. I don't know if you can hear that, uh, but I'm going to tap stop. So you can listen to your creation, but songs are meant to be shared. Podcasts are meant to be shared. So this is what you need to do. In order to save your project, you need to go to the upper left corner and tap on my songs. And when you do that, it takes you back to your GarageBand home screen where all of your song projects are listed. And then you can tap on the particular song title. So I'll tap on my song seven. And it takes you to this screen here where you can give it a better name. Okay, so I'm gonna title this something more appropriate based on the quality level. And then I'll tap done. So I've named it. And now that I've named it, I can tap the select button and then tap on the particular song. Okay, now that it's selected, I can do these four things with it. I can send it to iCloud, I can delete it, I can duplicate it like that. You can see now I've got two of them. And then finally, you can also share. And that's really the key one that you need to know. When you tap on that share button, it gives you a series of options for sharing your song or podcast. And some of these are just great. Uh, you can see I could save it to Dropbox. I could save it to Google Drive. I could import it with iMovie, all of these different options. So we've got so many different options to choose from. But in most cases, what you're going to want to do is tap iTunes. You're going to want to save it to iTunes. So I'm tapping on that and it gives me two different options. Save it as a song, save it as a project. I want to save this as a song. So I'll tap on that. It takes you to a screen with some information, you know, who's the artist, the composer, all that. And what kind of quality do I want this to be? Do I want it to be high quality audio, lossless audio, or just low quality? Maybe it doesn't matter that it sound perfect. I'll stick with high quality, and then I'll just tap share in the upper right corner. And it is now sending this recording, this audio file, to iTunes file sharing. And it's going to take some time because this is a masterpiece. It's got lots of different components to it. It's got my voice. It's got music. It's got music I composed. It's got music that was in the form of a loop. So it's putting that all together, mixing it, making it sound you know, as good as possible. So now in the upper right, I can tap done. And so now it's saved as a song or an audio clip that I could send to people. They could listen to it on iTunes. They could listen to it on their iPhones or any phone. They could even burn it to CD if they want to. So that's a pretty good introduction to the new GarageBand for iPad for 2017. I hope you enjoy using it. And for the teachers out there, I hope you find ways to use this with your students. It's a lot of fun and it's a really powerful tool. So thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students and watch for a new video at least every Monday.